I can't All right, we're starting. Is everybody logged in? Let's see. Okay. No. No. Who's not logged in? Working on it. I won't call them out, but two council members. Okay, get logged in so we can get going. <laughs> we're down to one. Then we'll get roll call. And and Rusty was not that uh, council member. I did manage to get logged in. <laughs> <laughs> and Rusty, I'm going to remind Thank you. For you clarifying so that, Rusty. I'm going to remind you that if you have your hand up and it's been a while, just speak up because I can't see you and I can't see your hand. Yes, got it. Thank you. Yeah, you're not interrupting rudely. You're reminding me to acknowledge you, and that's my my rudeness. Well, the hard thing is, is with the uh, single direction of the transmissions, I can't tell when I'm talking over somebody at times, and that's what I apologize up front about. No worries. I'll tell you. Thank you. Okay. Are we, are we ready yet? Go. All right. Roll call. Yes, ma'am. Mayor Labar. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Case. Here. Council Member Connors. Here. <laughs> Councilmember McFly. Here. Councilmember Neal. Here. Councilmember Ott. Present. Councilmember Zulawaga. Here. Thank you. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. All right, this evening we're starting with ceremonies, presentations, and appointments, and we have 3A, and we have Mr. Nakai here to recap the Wildfire Preparedness Day. How timely was that? Good evening, Council. Uh, yeah, you're right, it was. Um, okay, uh, let me do a quick uh, recap. We had um, a, a pretty successful event. Uh, I think we had 320 log visitors on our clicker, but we missed quite a few that were just cramming through the one of the bay doors. Um, so we are probably actually got close to 400 uh, visitors that day. I think previous events, the most we ever had was around 150. So this was a stellar turnout. And, um, you know, we're here to tell you that a lot of that success is directly due to your support. This has made a difference in this event from past years. Okay. Um, we were able to get around 60 new signups for peak alerts. Um, as you know, there's been some issues with uh, notifications on both the High Park and the Mills Ranch and getting signed up for peak alerts is the easiest way to get around those. Um, we had uh, all of our first responders on hand to answer all kinds of questions that uh, the citizens had on how to prepare uh, for wildfire in our in our area and how to evacuate. Um, and then one of the one of the new programs that we introduced this year, uh, that the chief uh, is very excited about are these free confidential and voluntary inspections of your home's exterior. So they got several pages of signups for this and people can still um, go up to the uh, fire station now and, and ask for a free voluntary confidential inspection of your home's exterior. Um, let's see. Um, so um, I want to... Uh, uh, I want to thank uh, a few folks um, that helped put this together. First and foremost, uh, Bonnie Sumner and Susan Brennan. My, uh, <laughs> my partners in crime, if you will. They, uh, uh, they have both, they're both experienced at, at, at this type of an event. Um, especially with the Firewise uh, community, and especially when I wanted had a dumb idea, they would they would tell me, "Mike, you can't do that." Okay, so <laughs> it, was, it was a big help. Um, let's see. We um, we also want to uh, thank some of our somewhat sponsors that gave us good discounts on expenditures. Uh, first and foremost would be Carl Anderson. 
um, and spent swan uh, for uh, discounts on banners and printing. Um, that, that, that helped a lot uh, with our expenses. Uh, we want to thank uh, uh, some private property owners who allowed us to hang banners uh, in the weeks prior, that be Walgreens, Community Partnerships, and Pete Labar for uh, allowing us to hang banners on their property. Uh, we want to thank the Courier and the Mountain Jackpot for interviews and articles that they did. Um, Bonnie was uh, instrumental in getting that set up. Um, and that what this allowed us to do was to not, ex not spend money on advertising because we were prepared to buy quarter, sh quarter sheet or half sheet ads uh, with our flyers and stuff. But I think we got good coverage with the articles that they did on the event. Uh, so we wanted to thank them. Uh, also, we wanted to thank uh, Grace Johnson uh, of the city, uh, as well as Renee Bunting of uh, Taylor County Sheriff for their skills in social media, which um, I have none. <laughs> and uh, so they were able to get the word out on multiple platforms, multiple times. Um, and, and we think that was also made a big, made a big help. Um, let's see, I have uh, some numbers for you. Um, on uh, March 3rd, you folks um, um, agreed to fund this event with uh, $2,300. Uh, we spent um, $675 on uh, banners and $917 on printing for a total of $1,592. We received $200 in donations, uh, bringing the balance to $1,392. So um, we, we came in roughly $1,000 less than, than what was uh, expected. Um, and then um, uh, just a couple items as far as the, where the future holds here. Um, we, uh, uh, I'd like to maybe take some of the documents that we had that were very popular and get electronic copies of those to Grace and see about putting together a, a page on the city website where folks that either miss the event or people that are new or people that just, you know, all of a sudden there's a fire, oh, do you work and I fight information. Um, so we're, we just want to post a lot of this stuff where people can, can get to it. Um, and then uh, uh, lastly, um, the, the chief and I think this is, um, an event that we probably want to do probably every two years right now is our thinking. Um, if the public, if the fire situation changes and the public wants more, we probably ought to give it to them. But for right now, we're thinking every two years. I have for you a uh, thank you letter from uh, uh, Chief Lambert, as well as the uh, NETCO Board of Directors, um, which I'll give to uh, um, the city manager and a copy to the mayor. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, with that, uh, um, I wanted to uh, see if uh, any of my uh, partners here had anything else they Again, I would like to reiterate thanks to your support as a city. It made an enormous difference to us to not only have the funds to do a flyer like this, which was everywhere, it was posted, more or less so many people saw it that we advertised this to begin at 9 a.m. At 8.30, there was a line to get in, mm -hmm. which is amazing. And again, I want to thank Grace, she's still here, for all of her help in plugging us into the places that got the word around, which we've never had before. So I really want you to understand that the participation of the city now that we've never had before makes a huge difference. And it's really hard because we have snow and people say, why are you talking about fire? There is so much education that has to be done and we need the cooperation of the city and your resources to make it done. 
Um, Renee Bunting has been amazing in getting the word around, but I want you to know that in all of our meetings, we were very, very careful about spending money and not frivolously, frivolous, frivolously spending it. We had a discussion about donuts, which was <laughs> vetoed by me and Susan. <laughs> <laughs> Don't need to spend money on donuts. And for my part, being there, and um, I, I was at the Firewise table, but I also was in front of it to talk to people. And what I said to them is, tell me your concerns. Where do you live? And what are you worried about? And there is so much helpful information that's there, but we have to get it out to people. And we have to cooperate with the county, we have to cooperate with the police department, the sheriff, Chief Tyler, with everyone who is into this. And I do want to give a big shout out to Don Moore, who for those of you who may not have read about him, has this group called, let me get it, No Flow Co. It's basically out of Florissant. And what they do as a group is actually literally work to help people mitigate their property. And then they have a party and they eat. And what we <laughs> said to him is, we want you to come and we want you to find that person or people in Woodland Park who are willing to start an organization like this. And we have been working with him and that's our hope that somebody will start this because basically it's physical labor for people who can do it, for people who can't do it. And then they have fun and they like have nicknames and food and stuff. So that is what we are looking forward to in the future. So again, I wanna thank you again for your support. Your support was crucial and it made a difference and i am hoping that this will go on that this will not be a flash in the pan thank you thank you thank you very much any questions for me council just two comments uh well done uh, two is you got two hundred dollars in donations i think you actually had about almost a thousand dollars initially so um, but my comment is, is it possible to work with the city to have a donate button for this from private citizens so we don't have to look to um, fund it out of, out of the city funds? I mean, I think the enthusiasm I saw at the event and the amount of volunteerism and genuine interest from the community would lend itself to people to go, hey, I'll, I'll chip in 50 bucks and I would encourage you to do it annually. If you had a rise from 150 people to 400, uh, why stop? Why stop the momentum until you reach a curve of when you recognize you've got the sort of exposure that uh, would educate more of the community? So, just two suggestions. Yeah. Welcome. So the I, this is I think the uh, <coughs> third or fourth time you've brought up funding this event through donations as opposed to uh, taxpayer dollars, I believe. Um, it, um, I, I don't know, I, I have a bit of a different opinion on it. I believe this is a public safety issue. I believe public safety is first and foremost, this government's responsibility. And, um, I don't think they should shy away from it in any way, shape or form. Okay. Um, if we can get, uh, you know, donations, there's plenty of events that happen in this town that people volunteer their time and, uh, their funds to. Um, um, I don't know. Uh, like I said, you, you brought this up three or four times. I guess maybe, does anyone else on the dais? I would like to say, Mike, that- um, Feel this I same way? It's, our, it's in our job description, health, welfare, and safety. Um, and it is our responsibility. And I think that we should be uh, helping the citizens out if they want to do that. Um, so if there's donations to be given, well, then that's how you buy the donuts. Uh, yeah, in, in this case, actually, <laughs> actually, uh, I forgot to mention uh, Netco actually paid for the coffee and the, and the, yeah. and the cups and stuff, so yeah. they but paid I, for that out of their budget. But I, I wasn't on council at the time that $2,300 was yep. 
was uh, allocated yeah. to you. And but I, mean, I wish I was because I was so so yes. so if <laughs> if the rest of you don't subscribe to that same notion that we need to fund this through donations, maybe rather than me coming every two years to ask for funding, one of you that has this, you know, uh, concern about wildfire in this community, uh, we have a budgeting process. And that budgeting process happens every fall. And uh, so we're basically suggesting we do this every two years. Uh, if one of you is interested in it, you can bring it to the budget and you guys can discuss it in work session. And then we don't have to take up the people's time uh, discussing the same topic over and over again. Thank okay. you, Mike. Thank you. Great, thank you. Thanks. Okay, we're gonna move on. We have item four, additions, deletions, or corrections to agenda. We have none. And five is consent calendar. And I would normally ask if we could take it all together, but I see there's some contracts in there and I know I have some fevered contractual council members. So we're going to just start with 5A. Um, Hillary, I do yes. want to make a, a comment. Oh, sure. Uh, I, uh, and I'm sorry for interrupting, uh, but on I, the last item 5E, that was not in the packet that was distributed to the council members, at least it's not in the packet I received. And when I went to the website to see if there was an updated packet, there is no packet posted on the website. So I have never even seen item uh, 5E. I, I did. I, it was in my packet and I also got it off the website. And so. in addition, it was Thank emailed. You. It was emailed to each council right. member yes. when it was revised. Yes. Every yes. council okay. member received it in email. It is okay. on the website. I have not seen that. I'm at the website right now and the packet is not there. I heard that there was an update. I did not see it in my email. I have the file. I downloaded it. It, it was 200 pages. Um, Robert mentioned that a new one came out that was more than two, about 260 pages. I have not okay. been able to find that and it is not on the website. So um, we're going to task grace to check out the website and see if she can find it while suzanne grace proceeds. has the answer okay of course so it is on the website rusty there were two um meetings posted one of them was the work session and one of them was this council meeting so maybe just double check to make sure you're not under the work session hey um so grace i i, I, I am staring at the computer ipad here and um <clears throat> when i clicked on it it does show it's like 200 something pages right but um, but it will only load like the first page is what I ran into. So it looks like it's there, but for some reason it's not loaded. Okay. Okay, then then we have two different websites up. I'm pretty technically literate and I don't want to get upset about it, but I'm staring at the I'm upset. Thursday, June 2nd city council meeting link and the packet icon is grayed out. There is no packet that I can download. Right there. It's under agenda. It's under agenda. Always, that's the way it's always always is. I'll send you a link, Rusty. And then Please. it was emailed to each council member in addition. Yeah, normally there's the download the agenda. That's where uh, I normally can go to it. When you click on it, it takes it fork. The term is it forks you to a website that the packet is not available. Okay, well, for the sake of minutes, since we're discussing item 5E, we're Correct. just going to carry on with 5E for a moment for, for continuity for the meeting. So thank you. Ben, real quick, is there a critical deadline then since Councilmember Neal hasn't had the ability to? Well, did everyone else have the ability to review this? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay, so my conundrum is, Rusty, you're the only one who wasn't able to review it. Well, okay, well, I'll vote accordingly. I've got some, I've got some questions about it. So yeah. when we get there, let's. So I was thinking we would just do it now. Oh, you want to do it now? We just can discuss it. Oh, right. And Rusty, if you do you have the link to it now? I'm working on it. And what pages have been? I was going to say, mm -hmm. I'll look at I have not received a new email yet. Hang on one I'll second. I'll send it to you shortly, Rusty. I'm waiting for it to All download. right. Thank you. Thank you. 
And while while Robert's asking his questions and while council's discussing it, maybe you'll have the chance to review it roughly and you'll be able to make a decision. If not, get back to me. I will try, yes. Okay, and please let me know if you do not receive the link. Uh, we'll do that also. So it, it starts on what page in the packet, like just for simplicity. I don't have I five e. I'm working on it. Sixty four. It starts on. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So Ben, my question is a couple here. I see is a number of different uh, options or folks we can use for this, um, and I see their rates. Um, what is the anticip anticipated cost that you see with the workload that we have now that we would be re uh, need to outsource these individuals and what would that cost come to as a total? Yeah. So it's a good question. The, the main projects that we had to get, these, get this RFQ posted for because we need on-call engineers to execute a couple of these projects. So the first one is the MMOF uh, sidewalk funds and the grant that we got from Colorado Department of Transportation. That's the project which basically analyzes all the ramps around town, the trails, does the design, and then moves forward with that. We have to have an on-call engineer or an engineering firm available to be able to do that work. Um, we've also got American Rescue Plan dollars allocated for construction management services uh, for the Kellys and Baldwin projects. That's essentially uh, money that we can use to, for them to, to go through, manage all the testing, all the, the day-to-day uh, -day operations of those with the city staff will still be very involved, but um, that's workload that uh, we can focus on other big projects within the city. So those are the two big projects that were, were kind of needed ahead of time for there. Those uh, come out to for the uh, MMOF funds, I believe um, it was it was around $100,000. And then for the uh, construction management for both Kelly's and Baldwin together was about 200,000. Um, so there's no allocated amount in these particular contracts, the way that these were selected, uh, because you have to go through a request for qualifications process, it can't be cost based, um, you have to select firms purely based on their qualifications. And that's a federal and state requirement. So if we want to use our on call engineers for grant projects, we have to go through that selection process that way. And then you would develop task orders for an individual project. So say in our pavement management plan, we had identified that uh, a street needed to be redone. What we would do is get task orders from those on-call engineers that we have. And then we would be able to uh, select from the, that short list of firms and create the task order there. So really it's a, it's a tough question to pinpoint exactly what the dollar amount is because you know, I can say with, here's the road projects that we're gonna do in the next year, it's usually 10 to 15% of the value of the road project, but say it comes up where we have a structural project that has to happen. Like uh, for example, the analysis of the, uh, the dish and the communication tower on top of the police department, that would be another task order that we could utilize these services for. Uh, so there's a range of, of services, they would all have to fall within the budgeted amounts uh, that were allocated, but they're essentially the service, the engineering design service as part of that project. Do we at any time want to use, uh, or do we envision having in-house engineers to, to fulfill this, or is this always something you're going to outsource? Uh, so that's another good question too. So just to give you a perspective about how, what it takes to design like a street project, because that's the one, or a water project, because that's what I've done in the past. So usually for a single street project, you have to have a licensed surveyor on staff that has to perform all the survey. You have a geotech that has to perform all the geotech. So you either have to have those in-house or you have to go out to solicit their uh, resources. Usually it's anywhere from two to four engineers that work on designing a project and that's their full-time job, just sitting in CAD, designing, going through all the stuff. Um, that's something that we could do. It would be a pretty large expense. And I think the effort expended, it's usually more efficient to utilize the, the resources and just manage the projects than to design them in-house. But that's I have question. no more questions. Thanks. Okay. 
Rusty, did you get the link yet? Did we? <clears throat> Rob, did we lose him? Probably just downloading that link. Mayor Labar. So, yeah. Um, just because I know that Cindy Keating has her team here, right. and she also has <laughs> Logan Simpson on the line. If um, council has any questions for any of them, Cindy has would love to introduce her team. Well, and I think what we'll do is let's just carry on with this topic since Rusty's out. I, he can. I am back again now. Okay. So, Rusty, what I'm going to suggest is if you haven't had time to review it, you're not going to like my suggestion probably, but you if. The, the quickest solution for the sake of the council and the audience that's here is just vote no. Yeah, I was going to say, it sounds like you all have read it, are comfortable with it. I could either abstain or just vote no out of, right. out of the conscious. Either way, I believe my sensing is it will pass, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and ask for a motion on this topic then. I'll, I'll second it. Oh, no, you have to make the motion. They have to make the motion Sorry. You can make the motion <laughs> if you'd like to, David. So are we doing just E? Just, just e. e. Okay, yeah. gotcha. So we're going up. And you can different. make it yeah. as written. I'll make the motion. Uh, I make a motion to approve of on-call engineering and land use development services contract between the city of Woodland Park basis baseline, JR Engineering and Wilson and Company. I'll second. second. <laughs> that was a tie. <laughs> you need we need red buttons. <laughs> Thank you, Council. The motion has passed six. Zero with um, council member Neil abstaining. Perfect. Thank you, Rusty. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. Let's not slow down the meeting any longer than I already am. It's it's not just you, it's all of us. So. <laughs> <clears throat> we're notorious for that, right? We are trade professionals, do not attempt this at home. So uh, we're gonna move back up to item 5A. Uh, we could do A and B together if you all are comfortable or we can just take them individually. Can we include C? Uh, we could include C if you all are comfortable with that, unless someone has a question. We can do all three. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve items 5A, B, and C as presented on the agenda. I'll second it. Thank you, Council. You may vote. Thank you, council. Motions passed unanimously. Great. So now on to 5D, and that's approval of contract from Logan Simpson. And Cindy Keating is presenting. Thank you, and good evening, um, Mayor LeBar and city council members. Tonight with us, I believe we have Jana McKenzie from Logan Simpson. Okay. And then also, well, Jana is our principal and primary contact for Logan Simpson. And then also today, um, we have our proposal review team, and I'd like to introduce them to you. And at the end, if you have any questions for them, I'm sure they'll be happy to answer those for you. Um, Jerry Smith, Terry Baldwin, and Jim Rumsey. Um, so there were three um, volunteers, community volunteers that helped on the review team, and then two staff members, myself, and then Brady Warner, our aquatics manager. So I just wanted to briefly go through the process with you that we followed. In um, the 22, um, 2022 budget, City Council approved $75,000 for this project. It was included in the 2030 comprehensive plan as well as an action item to be completed by 2023. Um, and so using the urban leap process that we have, requests for proposals were issued on March 3rd and proposals were due on Mar April 15th, tax day. We had 75 vendor views. We had six interested vendors. And then we had two proposals that were submitted. The submissions were received from Valerian and Logan Simpson. Both submissions were, met all proposal requirements. 
So that moved them to the evaluation process. Both, pros both proposals were reviewed and evaluated by our team and then was suggested because the review process was so close that we conducted interviews. So we lined up interviews for both consultants. They were set up on May 11th. We although Valerian brought a lot of energy and did a great job interviewing, Logan Simpson has the experience, the staff, staff depth, knowledge, and then of course had just recently completed our 2030 um, comp plan. Um, so our team, not unanimously, but we finally got there, uh, selected Logan Simpson. The proposed contract, which you guys have, includes community and stakeholder engagement, planning context and community needs, vision, goals, and policies, alternatives and priorities, and a plan development. So tonight, our recommendation to you is to approve the proposal for the amount of $74,961, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute the contract with Logan Simpson for all items outlined in the proposal. We'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Like I said, Jana from Logan Simpson's on Zoom as well, and then my team too. Very good. Council, do you have any questions? Well, no. Go ahead, Rusty. Yeah, Robert and I did talk about this, and uh, I, I am concerned that we are uh, we are looking at awarding another contract to, to the same company when uh, on two occasions I've asked to see at least the draft of one of their project that they owe us. It's the municipal code review. I haven't seen that and I've asked for it twice. It was part of the $100,000 contract that we had. $50,000 came from the city we did receive the 2030 comprehensive plan. So I've seen that um, document, but the one that really has a little bit more meat on it than an aspirational document is the municipal code review. We haven't seen that product. So I, I'm very uncomfortable awarding a very large contract to an organization that as of right now has not completed their contract. They have, it, it's, um, can, can uh, we get a sensing on when we're gonna see the second half of the previous contract? I'm Did happy I... to respond to that. Um, I do have that draft document in my office. Um, because of being new and um, staffing issues, uh, we've not um, had a chance to really drive through that and uh, bring it forward. Um, in a meaningful way to both um, Planning Commission and City Council. Um, I, like I said, they, they did deliver that. We do have it in our possession. So the delay is not Logan Simpson? No, it's internal staffing struggles. Sure. Very good, thank you. Uh, Rusty, do you have any other concerns you wanna bring up? No, I, I just have a clear conscience. I, I have to vote for, for it this one way or another, and I haven't seen the quality, regardless of who's at fault. And I guess it's not Logan Simpson's, but I would hope that we would have the wisdom to delay awarding this contract until the city council sees the quality of their work on a far more uh, challenging document than the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan was a feel good document. There's no real teeth in it, it's aspirational. The, the municipal code review, that one is going to be controversial. And, and that's where I want to really see the quality of the work. So I guess I'm telegraphing my, my request, which is to delay voting on this one. Otherwise, um, I would have to not support this particular contract at this point in time. Hey, thanks. Robert. Yeah, I am. Um... I, I'm uncomfortable with this contract for a couple of reasons. One, uh, in working with Logan Simpson, I felt we had to pull teeth uh, regularly with them. Uh, the uh, engagement that we had hoped from them really it was a, they had, an, in my, from my read of it, they had an agenda that they wanted to present to us and in place over our city. And it took a lot of um, backwards and forwards to get uh, it up. Uh, to be a reflection of the people. Um, that contract was $50,000 out of the city's pocket. 
The other 50,000 came from a grant. This here, which is even more of a, uh, of an aspirational document, we're spending 75,000, we're proposing to spend $75,000 of the people's money on this plan. And uh, I'm not convinced why we spend one and a half times as much as we spend on a comprehensive plan for the entire city on, on this parks and trails. So I think that it's great. We had an RFP, it went out to 75 companies. Uh, I would certainly like a different perspective than the company that put together the 2030 comprehensive plan. And so I, I'm not in favor of this contract. Okay, anyone else? And if, and I, I, don't, I can't remember if, if Cindy said, but one of the clears paid out of the American Rescue Plan dollars, not general fund dollars. Yeah, I didn't say that. Thank you, Michael. So oh, clear. thank you for clarifying. And Cindy, would you say that uh, to Council Member Zulawaga's point, um, would you say that this one costs more money? It's got to be a lot more detailed for a specific trail plan uh, in the city than an overall comprehensive uh, aspirational plan, as Rusty uh, put it. I'm sorry, Councilor Neal put it. Um, just, just to maybe calm his mind about that, about why sure. that might cost more. Sure. Thank you for that question. And I'm going to actually um, call on Jana to answer that for you. Hi, thank you. Yeah, I'm Jana McKenzie with the principal of Logan Simpson. So I appreciate your concerns about finances. I just want to say that the plan actually total is less than the comprehensive plan. And I can share with you our work plan. Our hourly rates are less than what you've just approved out of the civil contracts. We have applied things to it. And if you look at what's done in other communities, because I we, we have two or three of these going on at any one time. So we are pretty much expert in the field of this. It is a different team that goes into this than what was with the comprehensive plan. So we have some overlap with some people that were involved, but it's a different kind of effort. So yes, there is more detail. We get down into specific recommendations and cost estimates, and we try to figure out how to make an action plan that will translate to a capital improvements program over time. So when you get to that level of detail, yes, it does take some effort. The types of plans that we do, for example, there have been a 20% increase in labor and expenses over the last two years. So just keep that in mind. We also have contracts for other communities that range, uh, City of Delta was $130,000. The City of Craig, which was done three years, four years ago, and Craig has 15,000, 13,000 people, I think. No, they have more like nine. That was a $84,000 project, and that was done uh, three years ago. So I think we've actually given you pretty good value for the money and um, have tried to be very efficient in terms of how we use your budget to focus on the things that matter for your community as we work through this process. So if you want more detail on that, we have many references. We have very satisfied clients. We don't have anybody who doesn't have, who has uh, spoken negatively about our work in the past in terms of producing this kind of product. So. Um, I hope you can understand that and hope that you can approve this contract. And if not, then we'll, um, I guess we'll just wait and see what you decide you want to do. So with that, I'll turn it back. And you, I Jana. do have a question for Jana. Uh, Rosie, Kelly actually has one go ahead. first. If he has a question for her, let him go ahead. Okay, sure. Thank you, Kelly. You're uh, welcome. It, it, and Ms. McKenzie, and I hope you don't mind if I call you Jana. Um, That's fine. Uh, I don't want to say anything neg negative against your, your company, learning that the holdup is not with your company. It's, it's with uh, the, the staff and it has a, a very good reason for it being slow with um, the, the person is new on board trying to you know juggle a lot of things. But in your opinion, is the the parks and trails proposal that you are offering, is that document gonna be closer in content and makeup to the comprehensive plan or to the municipal code review in your opinion? Both of those other documents are totally different kind of documents. Jen Gardner is a landscape architect and planner who's worked with us for several years and she's an expert at code, which has to do with writing regulations. This is not about writing regulations. This project, this project is about identifying specific things that need to be done in the community for programs 
and for physical improvements, and then figuring out a strategy for how they might be funded going forward, right? And that you will have the idea, the opportunity to prioritize as you come up with your list later on how to, how to make that work. So I would say it's not like either of them. So I can't say it's close to either. If it were closer to the comp plan, I would say yes, because it deals with the whole city from a physical standpoint and deals with the connectivity and it overlaps transportation and overlaps land use and it overlaps drainage and it overlaps all those things that, that you deal with your public spaces. So I don't think I answered your question directly because I can't answer it. I think no, you, you did asked, like comparing apples and oranges. No, you had a very good um, answer and I appreciate okay. the answer. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Okay, mm -hmm. Councilmember Case. Yes, um, I just wanted to, to share um, the previous uh, Parks, Trails, and Open Space Master Plan was done in 07, Cindy, or 08? Um, Help the me. The previous professionally completed master plan was in 2007. That's, that's what I thought. And most of the projects that are um, identified and designed and costed and all of the detail of how to develop those projects, most of those have been completed. And so it is not an aspirational document. It is a, it is a plan to develop our open space, our trails and our parks that are not developed so far that the community wishes to develop. And so it isn't aspirational. It actually is a very solid concrete plan that we can work from and use in our budgeting processes from year to year and, and look towards uh, funding those projects. Um, and that's what we used it for in the past. And it's, it's overdue. Uh, actually, it's done typically, I think, every 10 years. And um, so we have a lot of things on the horizon for our community to develop those amenities that are so attractive and that we all enjoy. Um, and so I just wanted to share that um, with the council and with the community that it really is an action plan that is executed and very valuable for the budget. Thank you, Kelly. I also wanted to add with that is that I do believe I can honestly say that our community has changed since 2007 mm -hmm. and their desires of what they would like to see in our community has changed since 2007. And then when it comes to funding sources nowadays, everything is looked upon regionally and we need to be bringing in the region into our plan as well. So we can collaborate and get monies that can do, that can support the city of Woodland Park, but also our whole surrounding area, which also affects the city of Woodland Park. I'm gonna just add to, um, who was it from Logan Simpson that the board interviewed? We interviewed Jana and Taylor. Taylor. And give me a second, I'll look at the names. And Christina. Okay. Christina, and who else, Jana? Jeremy Cole. Jeremy Cole. Okay, so you had a number of people interviewed by a number of citizens who are taxpayers on the board, and they're the ones who made a collaborative decision to hire this company. That is correct. And then Jana, how many, if you could just guess for me, how many cities have you worked with collaboratively over the years? Oh gosh, probably 40. And I have, I'm just redoing Inglewood's plan, redoing Fountain, City of Fountain's plan, redoing all these others. So people come back, did Greeley's three times and updates. So this is what I base a lot of my practice on is parks and recreation, not only the planning, but the design as well. So that is the focus of our firm, as opposed to some other people who propose on these kind of projects. Okay, and the board had access to all of your resumes and experience and, and projects and examples, right? Yes. That yeah. Was yeah, that was included in the proposal. And there was also references that were included in the proposals and for both proposals. Right. And references were checked. And they weren't the only company interviewed. The other company was interviewed as well and had the same opportunities. That's correct. Right. I would okay. also suggest, Mayor, if you don't mind me sharing as the liaison to the Parks and Rec Advisory Board, I believe we had a unanimous vote approving this to bring it forward to the council. Correct, Cindy? Well, when we first started, uh, well, through the, the review, right. excuse me, review group, we had a 4 1 vote. Um, but um, we really did come to consensus shortly after that that 
we would be getting the best product, the best service for the money that um, we'll be paying. But the advisory board as a whole forward this on to the council for approval, correct? Well, actually, the review team forwarded it on to council. Okay. We I didn't vote on it. The Parks and Rec advisory board. We did not vote it. on it there. Okay, I'm sorry. I misspoke. Thank you for correcting me. Maybe we should have. I, Robert has a question. <laughs> so um, I'd be inter I'm, I'm going to preface my question firstly with this. If you look at page 66 of the contract, it says that um, consultants shall perform the work using that degree of skill and knowledge customarily employed by other professionals performing similar services in the Denver metropolitan area. I would suggest we're a mountain community. One of my oppositions to this particular firm is their uh, Agenda 21 United Nations footprint that they put on all of their plans, which have this idea of sustainability and these other globalist concepts they're trying to overlay into the smaller communities. I would like to ask those of you who selected this company, in your summary, you said that, what is it, Valencia, Valerian? Uh, were very dynamic, engaged, and exciting. Why did they not, what, what was the, can you explain where that is? Because I'm uncomfortable with this company. And would you like to talk to the review board or would you like me to answer that? Uh, any one of you, it's fine. <laughs> so um, coincidentally, so Valerian is a much smaller company and it, it's like there are three, distinct parts, three or four distinct parts that we're going to have to come together to get this project done, not under the same roof, that kind of thing. So I think what finally swayed us was the, the depth and the experience of Logan Simpson. And as a side note, one of the principles with Valerian or with that group that, that made a proposal is, is the, or the president of our Parks and Rec Board advisory board. So if there was going to be any kind of, for me anyway, I had to really check myself before we started because I didn't want to review these with any kind of bias. And so experience the depth of the people they have in their company is kind of what swung it for me. Thank you. And, and I do have one more question, Hillary. There's Here, one, there's Rusty, you. there's one more comment here if you hold just a second. Go ahead. Absolutely. Um, Mayor LaBarge, council members, city staff. Um, it was a pleasure to be um, asked to be on this. Um, I have, through my working career before I retired, not only did I have to prepare um, proposals for people, but also I had to review proposals for people. And with my counterparts of saying what we looked at, what we experienced, um, we felt we went with the best company that had the depth, the knowledge, and they have worked in smaller communities and working on a project right now for a smaller community in Fountain, Colorado. And that is where we went. It wasn't an easy decision. Both these companies were very good. Let me say that both proposals were done very well. Also, when we received these proposals, each of us had to go online, go through a process, evaluate every question on the proposal. And that came to a, what you call a median score for every question. And then a median average score per vendor. And in the end, um, the average median scores were very close. But again, we felt as a group, that going with Logan Simpson would be our, our best in the overall process for this for the city of Woodland Park. And, and I'm sorry, uh, Council Member Zuluaga. I'm sorry, I, I missed. What was your concern? Uh, what, what was your concern with this company? With Logan Simpson? Yeah. What well, was all through the process with a comprehensive plan? It, uh, I sense that we were really playing tug of war with them in terms of what they wanted to. Well, well, I'm sorry. Sorry to interrupt you. Um, my more specifically, mm -hmm. you, you mentioned something about um, you was it, the UN? agenda 21, the United Nations sustainability. That's a whole imprint plan they want over communities. And if we as a community adopt those and we adopt these 
uh, the governance over the way that we develop our community. And I have a huge problem with it. There's a lot written about it. Did you read the, the plan in here yeah. to see what they're doing? Did you have a problem with specifically the trails and the, and the actual things they were going to do in the community? I or have a problem with a company's ethos. We're in the and therefore, not- my, my, my concern is we had other vendors at it. I would like a fresh set of eyes rather than the same company who are very professional. They're very good. Don't get me wrong. But they, I'd like a different set of eyes looking at our community rather than the same set of eyes that runs these cookie cutter processes. And, and I don't, I personally won't support it, but that's my concern. Okay, now here, can we move yeah, on? Rusty had one insult. more comment. Yes, um, and it's actually gonna be a question directed to Kelly. Yes. Um, um, I do not want to penalize uh, Logan Simpson um, in my vote. Um, I had discussed this with Robert and I was very upset with awarding a contract to Logan Simpson because they had not performed. And Jana, you have performed. It's, it's just got delayed somewhere else. So Kelly, I, this is where I think the liaison job becomes critical in my mind. I, I turn to you um, and, and I trust your judgment. You've got the budget or you've been monitoring the budget for your um, committee that you're the liaison. Um, I think your budget is $75,000 total. Yes. So you're comfortable with spending essentially all of your budget on this particular contract and your faith in this company and um, the quality that they will deliver, um, it's worth it. I'm asking you directly as a council member to council member. Thank you, Rusty. I appreciate your trust um, and asking me to answer that question. Um, The $75,000 that's budgeted uh, came from the American discovery, whatever, that plan, (laughs) and ARP, the American Recovery Plan. Um, Not that that makes any difference. Um, It is budgeted for this product and this product only. And um, I would suggest to this council that, and to you, Rusty, the folks that will be working on this plan are a completely different team from Logan Simpson. It's not the same team we had before. And I just would like to comment here too that I never felt like there was any driven agenda and I saw plenty of community participation in the comprehensive plan. And I don't support any political agenda from any UN whatever, Um, doesn't belong here. Um, But Rusty, I do feel very comfortable. I feel comfortable with the folks that participated in the process. They're very particular and very thorough in their analysis in these three folks here and Cindy and um, the uh, Brady from the pool. Um, I am absolutely comfortable. It's an it's an imperative document and it is very late in coming forward. Did I answer your question? You did and and it's from the testimony that we received from the podium. I was inclined to vote no and I had told Robert that I was inclined to vote no because I hadn't seen the other product and I'm trying to apply critical thought um, Mm -hmm. by judging the quality of their products. But Mm -hmm. um, in listening to you, the testimony, um, I am inclined to support this contract. And with that Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, I'll I'll be quiet from this point on, thank you. I'm gonna make one more comment and then we're gonna go ahead and move forward with the motion for this plan. Cindy, when you get the final product, will it come before us again? It will come before you for approval. Right. So. And adoption. Yes. That's right. So we actually get to review it and have a say in it. So just a reminder. So if anyone suddenly sees that France is telling us what to do with our trees, we'll be able to say we don't agree with it and find something different. Also so. along the way with this process, there, there are stakeholder meetings, of course, right? right. And council is one of those stakeholder right. meetings. Absolutely. Specifically, it's right. in the plan. Very good. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and ask for a motion, please. I'll move to approve. Hold on. My computer went to sleep, of course. I move to approve the contract from Logan Simpson for $74,961 to update the Parks, Trails, and Open Space Master Plan. 
And I'll second. Uh, who was that second? David. David. Okay. Thank you, David. You yep. Council. Very good. <laughs> Thank While you, we're tallying the vote, I just want to explain to those of you who chose this company, uh, I respect your decision. Um, my vote reflects my overriding concern. So thank you for what you did. Thank you, Council. Um, Rob will put it up there in a second, but the motion is passed 6 1. Uh, Council Member Zuluaga voting no. If I may, before I leave, thank you yeah. for your support. Thank you for the discussion tonight. But I really want to thank these guys for all of their time that they put in and their professionalism, because it was hard when you had a friend or a chairperson as a business that's proposing and you really want to be able to give them that business and they really did it um, unbiased and they did a great job. So thank you guys yeah, very thank much. Thank you guys very yeah, much for thank your you. time Appreciate and effort. It. All right, we're on to item number six, which is public comment on items not on the agenda. I do not have a sign-up sheet. I have it, ma'am. I'm holding on to it because it's for an agenda item. Okay. Uh, what about Zoom? It doesn't pertain to that. It's different. Okay. Then it's a different item. It's um, Mary Jo Larson would like to speak regarding the DDA. I thought it was the agenda item. No. Okay. So it's a not on the agenda item? No. Okay. No. No. <laughs> Okay, the reason I'm here is I'm Mary Jo Larson at 200 West Midland Avenue, which is the Calhan, and um, I'm chairman of the Downtown Development Authority. We have a new council and a lot of new staff, and uh, next month will be the um, end of my uh, term, and I just wanted to share some information about the DDA. I think I have three minutes, right? Okay. Okay. Um, I have been on the DDA for 22 years since it started. And when we first started, we uh, spent every Tuesday at 7.30 in the morning till nine o'clock trying to put this together. We had some, uh, we had a great attorney that helped us w understand the TIF, which is a tax increment financing. We had um, a lot of good support through him and uh, we've had our ups and downs. I'd like to tell you some of the projects that we did. And at one time we were considered one of the better DDAs in the state because of our projects and how successful they were. And that would, uh, the Dinosaur Resource Center, Tractor Supply. Um, there is um, the movie theater, the dollar store, the auto parts store, the Microtel, the hardware store the um, human bean and car wash, the tractor supply, big O tires. And most of those were, would not have been able to come to Woodland Park had it not been for the DDA support in helping them along the way. Each of these projects was a separate contract. So it depended on what they brought to the community, how much TIF fund they received, and they were all successful contracts and projects. Most of them are about, uh, some of them have ended and most of them are about to end. Um, the, um, after all of those good things, um, we got the COG car, the DDA got the COG car. And I know to some it's yay or nay, but it was a gift and it was paid, the move was paid for by a a citizen and the DDA is now transferring the ownership of that cog car in the wagon and horses to the historical society so that they can use them and maintain them and manage those so it won't be a, a hassle to the city. And um, the Woodland Station has been a real challenge. And I'd like to say that my name is on the contract from the Saddle Club that sold the DDA to the D or that sold the Woodland Park Saddle Club 
to the D to the city and then consequently the DDA. So I have been a part of that since the beginning, and um, I would really like to follow through with that project and try to see that developed before I'm done. I, you know, I, I just would really like to complete that and be a part of finishing that. We do have um, an interested developer. And now I do believe we worked with them for, this will be our third year. And I do believe that they do have the funds and some power behind them that they can do this project. Um, I know that they're working with some local landowners around that, and I think that they'll manage to get that work through. Um, I would, they I plan to have a contract on July 5th that we can look at. And then at our next meeting, if any of you would like to come, we do have a new presentation by some other interested developers. So all of a sudden we now have two on the table and I'm, I'm glad for that. Hopefully that'll make it better. And I would like to say that as per Sally Riley, we have had 24 different proposals for that project and all of them have fallen through. They just, it, the, the land is not big enough to make it really cost prohibitive for these developers to um, come in and make something for our community that really is desirable. I do think that with these added properties will give them a size that they will have more room to do that. Um, I don't know if uh, any of you have any question. Um, I would like to answer them for you. Um, I, you're new to it. I don't know if you'd have anything to say or not. So one thing that we discussed, uh, Mary Jo, about council when we have public comments with items not on agenda, mm -hmm. our job is to listen to the public and say, thank you very much. Um, if it is okay. an agenda item, then council can get into discussion on the topic. Okay, that's so. fine. Then. And it, I don't think that it was on your agenda item. I just wanted right. to inform. No, so I hope great. I didn't step over any boundaries. There. None whatsoever. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you very much for that informative you. discussion on thank your you. part. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Mary Jo. All right, very good. Council, we have seven unfinished business. None. Now we're on to item number eight, ordinances on initial posting. And 8A, the uh, approval of ordinance 1423. And Karen is our presenter. I'm here for a few items, so I apologize. I'm kind of taking a moment to set up shop. That's okay, because I'll <laughs> remind council, this is initial posting, initial posting only. <laughs> exactly. Yes. exactly. Um, so the request this evening um, is to approve ordinance number 1423, series 2022 on initial posting. And uh, grant, and it's a, it's a request um, or the ordinance, um, to potentially grant a conditional use permit with a site plan review for the purposes of allowing a tow company to construct and utilize a commercial building with vehicle storage area on lot one, Sunny Glen Retreat subdivision filing number two, also currently known as 2730 Mountain Glen Court in the community commercial zone and asking you to please set the public hearing for June 16th, 2021. Very good. It's initial posting, council. <laughs> Can I get a motion? I would I'd like to make a motion. Go ahead, Rusty. I'm sorry. Well, I'd like to thank Karen for the presentation and uh, the due diligence in working with the um, uh, the developer. Anyway, to, I'd like to make a motion to approve ordinance number 1423, series 2022 on initial posting granting a conditional use permit um, as written in the agenda, setting the public hearing for June 16, 2021. 
I'll second. Council, you may vote. Um, council member, thank you. <laughs> thank you, motion passes unanimously. Thank you, council. Great, now we're on to item nine, public hearings. 9A is approved, approved ordinance 1422. Karen is also our presenter and I will remind everyone, this is quasi judicial, so stay on topic. And I will forget to ask the public. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rob, I don't see the share screen. I know. I know. And I see we also have Mr. Howes here in the audience. So. I'm getting there. Sorry. It's okay. Here you go. Do, 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 do. There we go. So, um, thank you. Um, the request this evening is a, a public hearing related to conditional use permit number 21-003. It's a request by Skip Powes, the applicant and the Tamarack Land Company, who is the property owner for a conditional use permit pursuant to code section 18.09.090.g.1, contractors and construction services use on 4.22 acres in a portion of the west half of the southwest quarter of section 12, township 12 south, uh, range 69 west of the six principal meridian line southwest of Tamarack Tech Park filing number two and line northwest of Tamarack Tech filing, Park filing number one and it has an address of 1010 Research Drive located in the service commercial zone. So uh, the purpose of this item is a uh, conditional use permit to bring an existing non-conforming use into compliance. And it was actually the request for a second driveway on the east end of the subject property uh, that triggered the CUP application. Um, as we, um, oh, and to help orient um, with the overall map of the city of Woodland Park, um, you know, we have our distinctive horseshoe and then Highway 67 goes off to the north. Um, it is this little blue dot up here in the northeast corner of the screen. Um, and then on the first slide here, we have an aerial that also shows the location of the subject property relative to Research Drive, which comes off of State Highway 67. Um, in this particular area, uh, there's a variety of zoning districts and other uses. Um, it is this purple piece outlined in yellow is a subject property, zone service commercial. Uh, these white parcels uh, that are surrounded by a darker black boundary are actually outside city limits or county islands here in our community. Uh, to the south is the plan unit development of uh, Stone Ridge, which has been developed with some uh, single family homes. And then um, to the northwest, we have um, Sundance and um, Shining Mountain, um, PUD, single family or residential uses also. Um, other residences to the west. This uh, one uh, white island immediately to the east is actually the bus barn. And then um, a little bit further to the north is um, the location of the police station. So that's what's going on in and around that area. Um, with regard to the history of this particular property, the, there's one building on the subject property that was constructed in 1993. Uh, the property was annexed into the city of Woodland Park in 1997. And for whatever reason, zoning did not happen at the time of annexation. It was a number of years later in 2004 when the area was given a zoning designation of service commercial. And it was even back at that point where uh, the applicant was contemplating um, potentially dividing this property into three parcels at some point in the future. Um, that has not transpired since 2004. I think it's still a, a concept that they're entertaining at some other point in the future through a separate application. 
Um, and so this particular slide shows a couple of photos taken in 2004 showing the existing conditions of the property. Uh, you can see the, the building that was on site since 93. And uh, a, a greater point to point out is that um, there was no outdoor storage at that point in time. Um, and then, um, like I said, even with that establishment of the zoning district, uh, the next step in terms of actually getting conditional use permit in place at that point in time was not taken. So this is, uh, the, the contractor services have been operating there uh, since prior to annexation, and we're finally circling back around to, to close all those loops with regard to this. Um, the most recent conversations um, started in uh, December of 2019 around um, seeking that conditional use permit. Things got waylaid a little bit by COVID. And then um, it was uh, this past December 2021 um, when the applicant was um, seeking that second driveway on the east end of the property that um, they came forward and started submitting this application for our uh, review and processing. So when we drive into more detail about what's going on on the site, um, in this particular slide, you can see the bus barn here in the bottom right corner. Uh, Research Drive comes in and around uh, the south and west side of the property. Uh, the driveway entrance is over here on the far west side that closest to um, the building, and that's the existing driveway. Uh, there's uh, some of the outdoor storage that they have been doing without benefit of permit is um, some concrete rubble that has accumulated. There's also some other existing equipment in around the site. And just as a point of reference, we have the Loy Gulch here off to the northeast side of the property. Uh, the proposed location for the second driveway is down here on that southeast corner of the, the property. So my next series of slides um, relates to just some other photos that were in the staff report to help orient to the, the property. Um, so uh, starting at that southeast corner um, of the property, that's the, the top picture, and we're going to circle along on Research Drive, um, you know, as we kind of come around the corner of the property on that lower photo. Uh, then uh, around in that corner down here, you can see um, the entrance into the property and the, the building <coughs> hidden in the, the pines. And the bottom slide is, you know, right there at the entrance into the property. Um, so looking into the property at the actual entrance point, you can see clearly the building that's been there since 93. And then this last photo is at the northwest corner of the property, looking back in um, towards the, the driveway and the, the buildings back in this particular area in the center of that, that lower picture. The next series of pictures are what's going on on the site itself. So you can see um, some of the concrete rubble that has been stored there adjacent to Lloyd Gulch. Um, some storage of some soil, um, just, um, just kind of the overall layout with some other terrain issues, um, soil storage. Uh, the picture on the far right, you can start to see some of the equipment that's out there on site. Um, other things that have stacked up around the existing building. Um, and again, just some other vehicles and, and things that are stored there on site. Um, last series of pictures, just finished just taking a look around there. Uh, interesting to note the center picture here on this slide, you can see through the pine trees back to um, Research Drive in the distance. Um, so that stand of trees is important from the concept of talking about screening of what's going on the site from the, the, the street adjacent to it. So um, again, just recap the overall site, uh, what's going on there. So that um, you can just, just, just touch base on that again. Um, and so the next two slides are from the applicant uh, looking at um, zoning and CUP, conditional use permit compliance. So uh, this particular property is, or this particular slide is oriented uh, slightly differently that the uh, research drive comes in here along, oops, excuse me, um, along the eastern side or the right side of the screen, um, and then around to the, the south end of the property. Uh, the green bubbles around the, the perimeter of that property are showing uh, some of that landscaping and open space that are required to be on the property. Um, the existing building is noted. And then um, with the topography, you can see there's um, a natural depression here closer to, to Lloyd Gulch. 
And in this next item, or this next slide, that's where he's uh, showing more detail with regard to the proposed um, second driveway there on the, the eastern side of the property. Um, with uh, this particular side, so is a solid screening fence along the property line, and that was proposed to be at six feet in height. Um, unfortunately, our regulations require fences in excess of 36 inches that are solid to be placed back on the setback line, which would, in this zone district, actually put them 50 feet in on the property. Uh, this was a point of conversation at the Planning Commission, and um, in the conditions of, uh, associated with their recommended approval, they uh, made a recommendation that that fence actually be 25 feet off the property line. Um, so that would put it here in the, the middle of, of that setback line that's shown on this page uh, from, from the property line. Um, and then there's also an illustration of what that solid screening potentially looks like. So when we look at the approval criteria associated with conditional use permits, we need to explore um, you know, the need for this at this particular property or at this location and mitigation of any impacts. Um, we note in the staff report that this site was developed prior to annexation in 1997. And I just remind you that we are taking care of an existing nonconformity with this particular request. Uh, with regard to public health and welfare, uh, this is a relatively low intensity use that can be contained on the site, as well as buffered and screened from surrounding uses. Uh, property values, uh, this use was in place or has been in place for over 25 years. Um, other uses have developed around it, including the um, homes in that area. Uh, so that does not appear to be um, adversely impacting each other. And then is this in harmony? Um, and there's no, um, no, no, no known conflicts with neighboring properties re related to this current use. Um, the next criteria relates to city plan compliance. And um, there's a couple of policies and goals noted in the staff report where there, this is in conformance with those. Um, but this was a point of discussion at Planning Commission with regard to a mapping difference between the 2010 and the 2030 comprehensive plan. Uh, the property, the subject property on the, um, on the left map is um, here that I'm trying to show my mouse around. And at that time it was, um, Oh, I'm sorry, it's this pink one. Um, it was flagged for um, other commercial use, I believe was the designation. I don't have the key handy, I apologize. And then when we went to 2030, uh, it got mapped differently um, and identified more for residential use. Um, but I do wanna note that this future land use map is just that, it's a guide for informing future development of the property. So in this situation, like I said, we're trying to take care of an existing use that's been there long before either one of these plans. Um, I can't hear you, sir. If the property is sold, it can be residential at that point because it's still designated residential in the future, correct? If the, it's rezoned, if somebody wants to develop it as residential, they could use the comprehensive plan as support for changing zoning and developing it with residential uses. Yeah. Um, so the next criteria relates to compliance with city regulations. Um, you know, they are um, working towards compliance uh, as part of this conditional use permit. They will be addressing existing stormwater runoff and addressing water quality associated with that, which gets them further into compliance. Uh, with regard to traffic impacts, even though there is a second driveway request, this is largely for easier site access, but there's no increase in traffic expected. Um, for environmental concerns, um, that um, the site is relatively level, there's a little bit of grade to it, it slopes towards Logie Gulch, and um, the next comment really relates more to um, a point in the future, should this be uh, platted or subdivided, that Loy Gulch may be platted as a separate lot in that future subdivision. Um, and then just that other note that they need to mitigate their existing um, stormwater runoff and assure that the quality is intact. With regard to utilities, um, there is that the existing building does not have water or wastewater to it. Um, so at some point in the future, um, if there was a, a building permit uh, requested for um, those, 
that we have internal plumbing, those um, utility connections would need to be made at that point in time. Um, there is um, the desire to place rota millings on the ground, the, the surface there that provides a better surface uh, for some of their storage, um, and then helps with um, mitigating any potential air quality. You know, the dust is associated with them um, just running around on a dirt lot. Um, and then again, just that need to continue to mitigate existing runoff or runoff from changes in the surface. Uh, regarding public danger, there's no significant safety hazards. Um, the Northeast Teller County Fire Protection District had opportunity to review this. They are comfortable uh, with the proposed second driveway and just requiring a 20 foot minimum width for that. And then finally, with regard to aesthetics, uh, there's no changes proposed for the building at this time. Uh, they are looking to retain as many of the existing trees as possible, which helps provide screening, uh, meet their landscaping and open space requirements, and then adding that fence to screen that, that outdoor storage. And then of course, we are asking them to uh, remove and clean up some of the debris that's um, on that site that's accumulated over the years. So the Planning Commission um, heard this in two pieces. Um, so they held their hearings on March 10th, and then again on April 28th, 28th and um, they found substantial compliance with the CUP standards, and they are recommending to City Council that um, this conditional use permit for contractors and construction services use uh, be approved with 14 conditions. And so those conditions are um, enumerated in your ordinance that you have in front of you this evening. Uh, specifically that prior to November 1st, 2022, the property owner must clean all litter and debris from the site. Uh, I, for example, the old truck, concrete and debris. Condition two, the final drainage report must be approved by the city engineer before a grading permit or a zoning development permit can be issued. Condition three, a grading permit is required for surface changes or disturbances that exceed 7,500 square feet in area. Number four, a single multi-use zoning development permit is required for the site improvements. These include water quality detention, surface changes with the addition of millings, uh, the second driveway, and the fence screening. Uh, a final concept plan for the site is necessary in order to issue this zoning development permit. Five, all current applicable fees are to be paid. Uh, specifically the stormwater fees based upon impervious area at the time the ZDP is issued. Six, final concept plans for the site shall be submitted that show location and dimensions for material storage areas and drive areas, equipment parking areas for rolling stock, water quality detention facilities, screening and fencing detail, details compliant with code section 18.42, 25% landscaping, 10% snow storage. Number seven, hours of operation shall be limited to dawn, no earlier than 7 a.m., to dusk, no later than 9 p.m., Monday through Friday. After hours, emergency operations are permitted subject to emergency requirements. Eight, all exterior lighting, if any, shall be downcast and shielded with a temperature of 3,000 Kelvin or warmer and shall not exceed the 25 feet in height. Nine, uses shall not include any activity involving the use or storage of flammable or explosive materials unless protected by adequate firefighting and fire suppression equipment and by such safety devices as are normally used in handling any such material as approved by the Northeast Teller County Fire Protection District. 10, no smoke, odor, vibration, glare, or particulate emissions shall be permitted, which can cause damage to health animals, vegetation, or affected properties beyond the parcel boundaries. 11, notwithstanding any conditions herein, this conditional use permit does not grant a noise relief permit and the use slash business shall at all times be subject to municipal code section 9.41 noise. 12, pursuant to municipal code section 18.33.180, at least 15% of the parcel shall remain as open space. 13, pursuant to Municipal Code Section 18.33.180D, healthy existing significant trees shall be preserved to the extent reasonably feasible and may be used to satisfy landscaping and open space requirements. 
And then condition 14 was added by the planning commission. They wanted to clearly state that it is the view of the planning commission that the front setback as is applicable to a six foot fence should be reduced to 25 feet. So with that, um, the final recommendation is that city council move to approve ordinance number 1422 series 2022 based on the findings contained in the staff report and as presented at public hearings an ordinance uh, granting a conditional use permit for um, 18.09.090.g contractors and construction services use in the service commercial zone at 1010 research drive Council, do you have any questions for Karen or for our applicant, Mr. Howe? Just wanted to know, Mr. Howe, did you have a comment on anything you would like us to know? Uh, Skip Howes here for and on behalf of Tamarack Land Company. Just a little bit of history. Back in 2015, there was a letter of map reno, rep, revision done, a LOMAR on the property where FEMA uh, modified the floodplain and defined it as a more defined area along the Loy Gulch area. In that floodplain study and analysis, they took into account the existing surface runoff from the properties and within their jurisdiction. So the big issue we're going to be working with uh, on our drainage and stuff like that is water quality. It's really close when you come to it a lot of kinds, but the issue is basically water quality. <clears throat> the Really the purpose of the second drive is to be able to have our gate further back in so that uh, our tractors and vehicles pulling in can get off the road. Right now, the, the gate and the road we have, sometimes it takes a bit of a turn and blocks traffic. So this is kind of a safety issue from our standpoint to try to get this done. Um, we did submit two plans. Uh, the Planning Commission asked us to do it in a, in a more definitive way. So we will end up kind of combining those two plans with the final concept plan. We'll bring in uh, with our engineer, uh, JPS Engineering, uh, a revised drainage plan that will show the things that are going to happen based on your action tonight. Uh, we may have some phased in water quality issues that will be proposed over a period of time, and that will obviously be reviewed by engineering. Um, Moving the fence to the 25 foot point was was kind of an issue that gave us the ability to maybe be able to identify that area from property line to the 25 feet as as open space and landscape area and then we can hide everything we have behind it, rather than having the fence at 50 feet and then having parking in front of the fence that's not secured and that type of thing so we got some great guidance from planning commission staff on that particular issue. Other than that I have nothing to say unless you have particular questions. Councilmember Case. Hi, Skip. It's good Hi. to see you. Thank you. Just a question as far as the trees that are there, they do a really nice job of mitigating and, and screening that, that lot. You really don't notice that anything's back there with those trees. Is, are you going to utilize a lot of that and, and use those trees as your screen in addition to the fence? Yeah, that's the intent. If, um, if you looked at the fit pictures that were there when you saw the picture of the gate, the building mm -hmm. behind, there was a row of trees planted to the left between that to the north. Those trees were planted by my dad when the building was built. Uh, they were brought in with a tree spade and planted. So they created that natural buffer or man-made buffer of trees. We're going to maintain that. Uh, we're going to adjust our gate a little bit uh, so that we can get off a little bit better. And then from the south side of the existing or slightly modified gate, that's where we're going to kick the fence back to the 25-foot point and then run around to the curve and, and, and tie that into uh, uh, the fence along the bus barn area. Excellent, thank you so much. You're welcome. Council, any further questions? Rusty, any questions? Yes, I do have a question, Mr. Howes. Uh, first, I wanna start off with a comment to, to thank Karen and the planning department, the planning commission and you, Mr. Howes, because when I read through uh, both of the packets from the two planning commission, it looks like there was a lot of give and take on both parts. So I, I thank you for your working with the planning commission. I think they did an outstanding job of um, listening to the concerns of the citizens that live over there. That is the access road to my house. So I drive by your property every single time I go home and every single time I 
uh, leave my house. So I have noted uh, a lot of the debris there, the old truck, uh, the concrete. Um, some of us think of it a little bit as an eyesore. Uh, the fact that you have agreed to remove the, the major things that would be viewed as eyesore, I compliment you. Thank you for doing that on behalf of the, the one resident that did testify at the planning commission who lives across the street. Removing that in combination with your uh, fencing that you've agreed to, and I think it was a wise decision to make it 25 feet versus uh, the 50 feet. Uh, it's just conducive with that property and where your trees are. Uh, but all the residents over there are extremely grateful for what you are doing to clean it up. Um, and, and I especially want to thank Karen for defining dusk and, and dark. So, or dawn and dusk, so that we would have no confusion about that in the future. Um, and also keeping, <laughs> that was a joke, some of you got it. Um, thank you for keeping the noise um, requirement to keep the noise down. That honors the residents across the street from you all. Um, and we are appreciative of that. Um, and I think you did answer the one question. You're adding that second driveway for safety reasons because that turn is so close and where the, the driveway would come up. I was concerned that you wouldn't have enough time to see anything coming out of there uh, if they were coming out and, and turning to the east. So you've looked at that and are convinced that that is a safer exit uh, by adding that second driveway, correct, Mr. House? Yes, that's correct. Thank you, because uh, that was one safety concern I had. I think it's an excellent move of what the city um, staff did with you and what you're doing with your facility. And I'm, I'm kind of saying this, hoping that I'm generating a lot of yes votes for this um, ordinance. Thank you. Well, I thank you for your comments. And one of the interesting things about being in our industry, and we share the property with Lamb Excavating, uh, and just for the benefit of emergency situations, Lamb Excavating is a backup provider to the city for um, emergency services. So that's part of the reason why that was in there. Um, but unfortunately, as a as a home builder and developer and, and excavating group out in there, we have a tendency to collect stuff. And um, <laughs> we have we have if you in the original proposal that we had with definitions, we defined with staff the definition of consumables materials and equipment. And, and the materials were things that are consumable during a project or something like that. And equipment are things that you might take to and from and use on a, on a project as, as things would progress. So there's not a lot of places in town right now where this use is in place. So this is a good place for it between, you know, a, a collector street and uh, a floodplain. Yep. Happy to answer any other questions. Council, if there are no further questions, I'm going to go ahead and open it up for a public hearing. Do we have anyone signed up for this topic? We do not. Did Excuse I? Me. Did and I, nobody on Zoom. Okay. Is there anyone in the audience? Yeah. Seeing, seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and close the public comment for this topic. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and ask for a motion. I move to approve ordinance 1422 series 2022 and ordinance granting a conditional use permit for 18.0209.090.G contractors and construction services in the service commercial SC zone at 110 or 1010 research drive. I'll second. Thank you, Council. You may vote. Thank you, Council. Motion has passed unanimously. Very good. Mr. House, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on to item 10, or number 10, new business. We have, um, oh, sorry, on nine, we also had B, but that's been withdrawn. So now we're on to 10, new business, 10A, and our presenter is Amy Jacob for resolution 892. Thank you, Mayor and Council. 
<clears throat> this evening, I come before you for approval of Resolution 892 Series 2022, a resolution by the City of Woodland Park, City Council, Colorado, formalizing the city's decision to opt out of the paid family me and medical leave insurance program. On November 3rd, 2020, Colorado voters approved the Paid Family and Medical Leave Insurance Act, which established paid family and medical leave in Colorado to be funded through payroll taxes. This payroll tax would be split between the employee and the employer 50-50. The current rate that is proposed is 0.9% of an employee's wage. So it'd be 0.45 from the employee and 0.45 from the city. The payroll taxes would begin being deducted January 1st, 2023, and employees would be eligible to take leave January 1st, 2024. With this um, approval of the paid family and medical leave, the state developed the Division of Family and Medical Leave Insurance. They are in charge of um, overseeing this program. They've also set forth provisions for local governments to opt out of this program. In order to opt out of this program, the governing body, U.S. City Council, must approve that. This does not mean that we have to opt out forever. We can opt in. You must opt in for three years at a time. If you choose to opt out, you have to vote on it every eight years. Um, if we choose to, if you approve us opting out of this program, employees of the city can still opt in and pay those premiums themselves. So with this, staff would like to um, like to say that we would like you to approve resolution resolution eight resolution eight ninety two. Sorry, to opt out of the family and medical leave insurance program. Council, any questions? I have one, Amy. Mm -hmm. So if the employee opts in, do they pay the, the full percent, the full amount, or do we, or does the city require to pay the other half? The employee would pay the full amount. Okay. Just double checking. Yes. And just to clarify, this does not take away the opportunity for an employee to take family medical leave. It's just that they don't have the insurance option through the state available. Correct. They opt in themselves. Yes. FMLA or the Family Medical Leave Act, they are still eligible. That is a federal program. Yes. And it is 12 weeks of unpaid time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And what, one other um, question, Amy, could you share why it is the staff decided that they prefer to opt out as opposed to doing it? Like just to give us a perspective on that. You bet. So when looking at the requirements set by the state under the Healthy Families and Workplace Act, we are required to um, give each employee, full-time employee, 48 hours of sick time. However, the city almost doubles that time. Plus we have um, our employees also earn vacation time. When we're looking, that was one reason. So we far surpass the requirements of leave for our employees. Our employees are still eligible for FMLA. There are slight differences between family and FMLA. The city also provides a short-term disability policy for employees for their own serious medical condition, where they can be paid 60% of their salary while they are out for the 12 weeks. So we do have that program also. Also, when looking at our overall budget, and we just presented to you the compensation survey, the 0.45% that the city would contribute, although small, it adds up for each employee. We could use that in our overall budget for compensation. We will have increases in our medical premiums, so it will help pay for part of that potentially. We felt that it could benefit all of our employees more by investing the money in other programs with the city. Rusty, any questions? Not on this particular one, thank you. Okay. Uh, 
I'm done. Okay. Thank do you. do we have anyone signed up for this topic? No, ma'am. Anyone waiting in the audience? Are you on for this topic? You'd like to say something? Okay. Would you mind coming up to the podium for us? Well, I do have a built-in microphone. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but it's it's for the uh, Zoom audience <laughs> in our recording. <laughs> I don't. And just work. let us know your name, please. Oh, my name's Eugene Houghton. Thank you. And uh, I've lived here since uh, we moved into our house December 20th, 2018. And uh, I love this community. It's great. <laughs> and uh, want to protect it. But uh, I want to speak as a individual who, when it comes to the paycheck, I want as much of it as I can keep. And there is the national program and the other benefits they've discussed. But just to put in that part, a lot of your employees, of which I am not one, they want to take home as much of their paycheck as they can. So I'm speaking for them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone on Zoom? No, ma'am. Um, I just will have Amy mention to you, we did meet with the employees. I did hold um, a meeting for all of our employees to attend so that I could explain what family is and get their feedback. Overall, the feedback of those who attended was they would like us to opt out also. They agreed with staff. Very good. Council, anything further? Can I get a motion then? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve resolution number 892 series 2022 as written. And I'll second it. Thank you, Council. You may vote. Thank you, Council. Motion has passed unanimously. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Council. Thank you, Amy. Okay, we're going to move on to item 10B, and that's to accept the 2022 compensation study as presented. Um, what I'm going to suggest before we go into discussion about it is this is my own personal suggestion. Y'all can discuss it and decide what you want to do. But it, it is that I would like to give a consensus that we approve with the conditions that whatever questions you had that you felt were unanswered and the um, one particular slide that was um, not to some people's satisfaction with the numbers, um, that Aaron redo that slide part, part and then you guys submit your questions to Michael so that he can forward them to Aaron and then they would be able to come back with the answers to those questions and be able to work on this um, compensation package at the same time. Because if we don't give them consensus, then they kind of are stalled out. And it would be good to get this in their budget process um, working along. And I don't know, Michael, if you wanted to add anything to that, because I don't say it so eloquently, but. <laughs> no, <clears throat> excuse me. You said it just fine, Mayor. Uh, no, I, we, we would appreciate that uh, for the council's consideration. Um, the, uh, what we're looking for is a, a consensus, really, and then this would show up as part of a supplemental package here in probably a few weeks. We have a few other things as well. Um, but again, a, a reminder is that this is for the rest of 2022, uh, for right now, uh, and probably October, you'll vote on the move for 2023, and we'll right. have some more economic data looking forward by that point. And then 2024, you won't have to worry about for a whole year and change. <laughs> right. And I was just going to add on to that. It's really the, the decision and the implementation comes with the budget other right. than what you're asking for in supplemental for this, for, for 22. 22. Correct. So we have lots of opportunity to cuss and fuss and discuss and all of right. that this stuff. This isn't approving it. This right. Is just, this is just accepting that. Yeah, that's so. what I, that's what I heard. This is uh, approving the fact of your study. I did hear Rusty express concerns of some pieces missing from that study. So I'm wondering whether your, your, what you're suggesting, uh, Mayor, is that that be included in the study? Right. 
Right. I'd like whatever questions you had that you felt remained unanswered, that you submit those to Michael and Michael will give them to Aaron and then they can come up with the answers to those questions for you as satisfactorily as possible. So we're suggesting we approve the study uh, with the inclusions of those questions that were not satisfied during the work study. Is that what I'm hearing? I, I don't think but, they're part of the compensation study. The study is the study. If you all have questions for implementation, and then, then you can take those up with the staff. And then as we implement and we go into budget talks, we can, you guys can have that data in order to make good informed decisions. The study is right. the study is the study. And the yeah, results and, of the study are I, in it. I would like. Go ahead, Rusty. And yeah, uh, uh, Mayor um, Labar, I, I think what your suggestion, just looking for kind of a consensus that we are inclined to support it. But a, as you noted, I, I thought it was lacking uh, some information that's crucial for a critical analysis of the study and specifically the churn rates by, by grade. I always wanna see that. So I know that we are doing something that solves a problem. And then uh, I'll write up the question. It's very similar to what Robert was um, discussing where we were gonna be going negative um, uh, in 2024. Uh, I would like to codify a little bit what the plan is or some of the language that uh, Aaron presented to us so that somebody you know when this council is no longer here and somebody's reviewing how could we have possibly voted for this knowing that we are we are spending more than we're going to get well i let would me like just, to see doc it, it's it's in, in 2024 so by 2024 it will be a different council and they will have different control over the budget so no matter what we did today they can take that away and so and it, they're, we're not I locked understand. into that. So <clears throat> what I'm asking for is consensus to move forward so that staff is able to prepare the supplementals. And in the meantime, those of you that had unanswered questions or issues, you can either email the questions if it's simple enough, or I'm sure that Michael and Aaron would be happy to meet with you individually and go over your issues. But for the sake of staff being able to prepare the supplementals and being prepared to bring it back to us to consider for budget review. It's just a matter a sake of time and efficiency. The supplemental is just 2022's well, budget. Right. And right. then the rest of the implementation will be considered with the budget process. Right. The study does not approve spending. No. So why don't we just give staff the consensus to move That's ahead with for. the supplemental That's what I was and let this for. get ironed out That's so that Rusty's questions are satisfied, that mine are satisfied, and that we are like, I'm not in support of a study that says we're going to be $88,000, even though notwithstanding Michael's comments about he expected it to be six figures, I'm just not supportive of, I mean, six what, what would 16 percent look like 16 would give us to the to the midline from what i understand I, didn't, I haven't crunched the numbers but what would that number look like if you did uh the the increase incremental uh increase to 16 percent wouldn't that hit our midline uh on all of those numbers and would that bring us to at least a neutral budget um when we and once do again budget. it's all it's i i totally understand that we'll be doing this year by year I totally get that, but no, you uh, don't. Excuse me. I said I'm sorry. Well, I know. Um, Go ahead with your thought, Robert. I'm sorry to. Mayor, you. some of us, some of my fellow colleagues on council, um, make it difficult for those others on council to express what's on our mind. Um, we don't all share the same point of view. So. I think it's a great study. I think there's some points that need to be completed on it. I'm fine to say, go ahead and prepare a supplemental uh, based on some of your initial findings. But I would suggest that we bring this back. It doesn't affect, uh, it doesn't affect your implementation of this for us to get it right. And if we bring it back next week or next council meeting, um, then you've got, 
a council that goes, yeah, this is a good document. Uh, otherwise, why did you have a work study to show us this if you didn't want our input? And for us to just rubber stamp it without you reflecting on some of the pieces that we suggested would be disingenuous. And, and, and if I could, and, I, I and think that's- I was cut off. Oh, I was ahead. cut off. I was cut off because I wanted a, an opinion from our city attorney when it says to the word accept, when we vote to accept the comprehensive study, I'm not sure exactly what that term accepting the study means. Um, are we bound to the levels that we saw in the study? Um, or are we just saying we accept, yeah, that was a good product, good briefing. So Jeff, when we use the word accept, are we locking ourselves into those options that were presented to us? Because I think Robert has some valid concerns about is, does it need to be 17%? Uh, I'm concerned with, you know, we're being, pes we're being very pessimistic on our revenue forecast and we're assuming that it's gonna be better. And therefore in 2024, when we are actually short, our, our revenues are less than our expenditures based on this recommended salary adjustment. Uh, I don't wanna be locked in or any council is locked in that we accepted this study if it means we're locked in. So Jeff, could you comment on what the word accept does mean? Well, I think this conversation is putting on the record what you all mean by accept. I think that's what you're talking about is what do you mean by accepting this? And if you wanna qualify that you are, are doing so. Okay, so by having this dialogue, we know we are not locking in the numbers that were presented yet. Yeah, and you, you, furthermore, you can't limit the legislative discretion of future councils anyway. And remember, Rusty, the budget is always theory. They're pro it's a projection. Well, I, so so correct. they're giving us an idea of what they project. And then when we finally get to that space and time, they're either way off, right on, or somewhere in between, and then it's our authority to accept or decline it by vote. This is just consensus to say, yeah, it looks, looks okay. Here's our concerns. Come back with the answers to these questions, if you would, please, and, and carry on with producing the supplementals for our review, keeping in mind the questions council had and the discussions that you all individually can have with Michael and Aaron. And, and, and if I may, and, Mayor, and, that's fine. and, and Councilmember Neal, if it helps, um, perhaps look at it a different way. We were looking for consensus around the, the concept, the principle, uh, yeah. perhaps, of this um, phased approach to market adjustment and getting us back up there. If you all are comfortable with the concept, and I, aside from being short a few data points, I, I'm not hearing any discomfort with the concept, right. uh, which is good. Well, Michael... But, that's Michael, can I clarify way. what you're saying? There were two options in the presentation, the 17% line versus the incremental. We are talking about a consensus on the incremental approach, correct? Uh, yes. Yes, yes. I, yeah, I didn't hear, but council did. Uh, the the um, incremental versus all at once. Right, yeah, incremental versus all at once is staff's recommendation. We are not recommending 17% all at once starting next month. Okay, and that's what I simply wanna be a part of this record as we are accepting this study. Right, and um, as, as Jeff said, you know, this council cannot bind other councils, you know, un unless there are resignations, this should be the same council by the time you all get the chance to decide on the final phase of this plan uh, about October of next year. Um, so there you will have, it seems like at this time you all will have uh, the, the authority to make that call. And the be, being a longtime 15 year budget veteran, the only thing I can promise you on these numbers is that, that they are wrong. Um, they will change. And they, um, that's, that's the only thing I can promise you for sure. But you, you certainly will have the authority at, at different points to, to adjust. 
And by state statute and just general good governance, we will pass a balanced budget every year. We have to um, to do so. Otherwise, would be um, very bad and illegal. So we we will ensure that 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 number is uh, in the black rather than in the red. Um, so for what that's worth. <laughs> Thank you for asking. And Rusty, Touché. an audience member said, could we do that on the federal level? So, <laughs> Mayor, I will okay. just offer my consensus to move forward. All right. Council, general consensus. Okay, very good. All right. So, uh, moving on to item 10D. We have discussion and approval of transferring a thousand from city council's budget. And I was going to let council member. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped C. I see the time on the clock and I'm just. <laughs> Is everyone okay with going four more minutes to nine o'clock before? Okay. No, oh, I'm sorry. 10 C approval of resolution 893 and Ben is presenting. Thank you, Council. This is a pretty easy one. This is uh, approval of Resolution 893 authorizing the sale of a permanent easement to the Colorado Department of Transportation for sidewalk improvements in accordance with the Americans with Disabilities Act in the amount of $1,500. This is basically a very small easement section that they need for ADA ramp improvements in 2023 right next to Ber Bergstrom Park. Um, they need to expand the ramp out to connect it and they don't have an easement to to uh, perform the construction there. And so they're offering a sum of $1,500 uh, for that easement. Okay, council questions? No, I read the packet that they were getting. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, David. You Rusty, any question? <laughs> no. Is that a fair value for it? Easy. No, I think I heard there must have been a modification to that. I can't speak uh, as to I if thought it's there was a fair value or not. They have a, in the they have a real estate analyst. Hang on one second, Rusty. Rusty. Yeah. Rusty did have the comment. Sorry. Rusty, the question was, is that a fair value, $1,500? Is that a fair value for that easement? And Ben was trying to answer that. And sorry, I, I'm not a real I'll estate. I'll let him go ahead and answer. Sorry, I'm not a real estate expert, so I can't speak to if that's a fair value or not, but uh, CDOT has a dedicated team of real estate experts that, <laughs> that provide that, that, that offer. <laughs> okay, and now Rusty, you had a comment that you were making? All I was saying, uh, um, Mayor Labar, was that it, it appears that there was some sort of a change to it. I, I didn't see the change if there was one. Mm -hmm. I thought the packet had sufficient information that I'm prepared to vote on that one um, easily. I'd be happy to speak to the change. Sure. So there was an option in there to donate this easement as part of interagency coordination. And so the way that we set up the resolution before was uh, to provide that option to donate okay. uh, if the council elected to do so. Okay. All right, council, are you comfortable with it as written and ready to make a motion? I'll make a motion public. to oh, oh and public comment. public comment. Is there anyone in the audience who wants to speak to this? <laughs> Suzanne, do you have anyone on Zoom? No. Very good. Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve resolution 893 as presented. I'll second. Ben has assured me he will not spend it all in one place. <laughs> <laughs> It'll buy us two square feet of asphalt patch this year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Suzanne, did you get my vote because it disappeared before I could hit save? I did not. Let me get and it. I did not get the Suzanne. I did not get the voting uh, window. Came no, back. Yeah. We good? Yep. Thank you. <clears throat> did you get it, Rusty? Yeah, it, it flickered and it went away. I, so I do um, not have it. I don't. I do not have a vote from Councilmember Neal or Councilmember Ott. Yeah, it did. The voting window flickered and disappeared. I do not okay, have. I it. have Councilmember Ott. Um, 
Would you be willing, Councilmember Neal, to just verbally say how you'd like to vote on this? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I vote in favor of it. Okay, I will check that box. Thank you, Council. Motion has passed unanimously. Thank you. And Suzanne, if you could withdraw the voting mechanism, it's locked up my screen actually. Maybe when you send us the vote again, it'll undo it for him. Yeah, if you could try that, Suzanne, because it has. Okay, um, we'll try for the next item. So for our 10D, it was the discussion and approval of transferring a thousand from city council's budget to the police department budget. And council member Connors, uh, I'm would like to move it to a future that. date because we've applied for disaster relief and we'll see how much we get from there. All right. Thank you. So we're, move, we're just withdrawing that for Just me. withdrawing it for right now. Very and good. If we get to disaster relief and it isn't enough, then we can think about doing something. Okay. We are on to item 10E, which is request to defer the transfer of Woodland Station property from DDA to city on 1231 2023. <sighs> And I see that Neil, uh, Councilmember ahead? Neil and Zulawaga are presenting. Um, yeah. And it is 9.02. Council, do you need a break? Yes, yes, yes please. Yes, OK. Uh, yes, yes, We are please. going to do a five minute break. So back at 9.07. <laughs>
item 10 E and it was brought to the agenda by council members Zuluaga and Neil. Would one of you like to present? Russ is yes, gonna start. I, I, I'm gonna go ahead and start this. So thank you very much, uh, Mayor LaVar. Um, when Robert and I first discussed placing this on uh, the agenda, um, we were aware of one development project for the Woodland Station property. Um, subsequent to when we asked this to be put on the agenda, we have learned that there is a potential second uh, project. So some of my wording is gonna be um, evasive because we don't know which project could um, be the project that the DDA board approves. With that introduction, um, using the initial project as a basis, the discussion that took place uh, was with the Mike Williams group and their project in talking with um, some of their team members, the, the concern was brought forth by the investors that they were worried about the current development and disposition agreement that is currently in place, which has a clause in it that the city council has the option to take Woodland Station. That's the, the one piece of property that this pertains to, the Woodland Station. It could take that property back on December 31st of 2023, which is only a year and a half from now. The investors were concerned that they could be, be through the first few phases of their project, which is the design, the architecture, but they would never have broken ground. And at the point that the disposition development agreement gives the city council a ch choice to take the property back from the DDA, they view it as a risk. They could be working for a different boss. So what Robert and I wanted to do what was merely ask the city council because some members are very familiar with the documents that, that uh, pertain to the D downtown development authority and woodland station specific there are some new council members that may or may not have knowledge about the document we are asking that we begin bringing ourselves up to speed on the Devel the development and disposition agreement plus amendment number one and amendment number two. So there are three documents that we're asking council members to just start reviewing. If you do not have access to it or you would like uh, me to find it and send it to you um, out of professional courtesy or ease, I would be more than willing to do that. Uh, our request has slightly changed in that we are not asking for an extension at this time. But when you review the documents, please put yourself in the mindset of an investor that they know it would be a five-year project and they would like to see an extension um, for those five years so that they did not change horses in the middle of their project just to mitigate some of their risk. So it, it's merely an educational request where we all become very knowledgeable should the Mike Williams project uh, be selected and should they come in and ask the city council to uh, extend the, the date in which the city council could take the land back from the DDA so they would be working with a different governing body. Um, and that's all the request is as of this point in time because of the new development with a second project um, uh, coming before the DDA this upcoming Tuesday. And I'm trying to be succinct, but comprehensive. Uh, so Robert, if I've missed anything, I'll let you uh, take it from here. Thank you, Council Member Neal. Uh, uh, I did ask um, the city clerk to ask the city attorney to give us a background on why it was even put in the disposition agreement that city council had the opportunity to take the property back. 
um, given the fact, if you understand what the benefit of the DDA is to the city, is the DDA allows the, the city is not allowed to incentivize business to develop in the city. No city is. So the workaround that Woodland Park chose, and some of you who've been around can, can um, add to this, but the workaround is to create a DDA, a Downtown Development Authority, which then allows to give TIF agreements, which allows um, a quasi-governmental uh, branch to uh, give the authority to say, okay, if you spend this, we'll give you this back. Um, and so that's what has, as um, uh, Mary Jo came in early and talked about all those projects that have happened through the DDA. So that has been because the DDA has the quasi um, uh, governmental authority to make these agreements. So I wanted to ask Jeff if he could fill us in is when did we decide that it was okay for the city to step back into that, that contract? And then I, I know uh, Council Member Case has also some experience on that. I can help with that if you need it, Jeff. Yeah, I don't know the answer because I just got the question. Oh, you just got the question? Well, just a, you know, a little bit ago, and I haven't looked at it, I don't know the answer, but I was, in terms of the general power of the municipality, whose instrument the DDA is, to re-enter the property, usually that's, if the DDA doesn't do what the city believes, what the city council believes they should do in terms of promoting business, they get the property back. They entrust the DDA with the property to do what they view, what the council views as the public trust. And if that isn't fulfilled, they take the property back. That's without me doing any research. Caveat. Well, the other part of that, right, and, and Kelly, you can chime in in a minute, but um, the other part of that is that the, if the city took it back, then we could simply sell it but we would not as the city be able to do any incentivizing to any business to develop yep. that piece of property correct that that was that was the conversation and what jeff said is is very clear that the council wanted to um, and in that disposition and development agreement did say that substantial completion is the language uh, needed to be reached. We did extend that one time in the first year Cal Hillary and I were on council. We extended it when it came due, which I would absolutely um, suggest that this council should wait until that time to even consider that. Um, but it was to, the city gave that land to the DDA. And the DDA did enter into some debt to, and, and to repay, to pay for that, um, and, and it's a long story. I mean, it's been 22 years, but the city bought that property. I signed the closing documents when we bought that from the Saddle Club. Uh, we paid $2 million for it, in addition to a trade of the land down across from the Swiss Chalet. The 2 million was to pay for the improvements above grade, which was the Saddle Club. And those improvements were demolished and the land was cleared to make it available for uh, developers and development. Um, the city preserved its right and that council was, was uh, looking forward and doing their responsibility to the citizens um, as the governing body uh, to preserve their right to come back in and take the land if substantial completion in their view was not completed. Now it's the discretion of the council what that means. So if there were, I would suggest that probably any reasonable council person and my fellow council people, if there was evidence that it was a viable project, there was financing, there was um, things happening on the property that were moving towards breaking ground, starting construction, etc. I would be very surprised that any council would come in and take the land. That just doesn't make reasonable sense to me, um, and this is my opinion, but um, I, I just to say my position while I have the microphone and hopefully I won't interrupt again or say anything again, can't promise. Um, I, would, I, I would just say that we um, look at this when the time comes. And I'm sure our attorney would schedule that with enough time for us to consider it and do the proper documents in order to extend that deadline 
with that document as we did before. We did it pretty hastily last time because it came upon us quickly. We were at the table in the city manager's office with the council and several other folks, the attorney, DDA's attorney, and, um, and made it so, so that they could move, keep moving forward. There were some viable projects at the time and it made sense um, for that to happen. Very good. So the, the reason this uh, topic is before you, Council Member uh, Neal and I are bringing it before you, is that the uh, one of the potential investors uh, is talking uh, quite seriously about uh, doing a, a uh, project here. The next phase for them is to spend several hundred thousand dollars of their own money to get this process moving, and they want a, to enter into contract with the DDA. They know that it that there's this caveat that at, if the project is not completed by December thirty first, twenty twenty three, it's not that the project be completed. Well, significant <clears throat> completion. The you know exact language is is uh, as was stated, substantial completion. They have already said quite clearly this is a five year project, so they don't want to go in knowing that there's this damocles sort of. Gen, uh, uh, December 31st, 2023, over the property, knowing they're doing their, their next phase of due diligence, spending uh, quite a lot of, of their own money on it. So that's why it's before us, because they will be bringing that to, um, to the DEA, uh, a contract as we all got an email this, this uh, last couple of days or last, last yesterday. So that's the, that's the background of what this is. Um, and one thing that I think is also worth bringing up, um, Council Member Case, you perhaps could add, put some light on it. I know that you have been outspoken with the desire to close the DDA. What's the, what's the pros and cons of that thinking, given the fact we've got an investor yeah, here? I'm, I'm gonna, Can I make I'm a gonna, point of order that we not get off topic that's, here? Yeah, thank you. Thanks. That is Do totally off to topic. We'll move to the next meeting. Wanting to close the DDA is not the not same the topic as what's on the agenda. Okay. I would suggest it, it could be, particularly in the discussion of it. Um, not in, not, it is not in the same realm as either extending or deferring a right to re-enter. Very good. Then if we need to bring it up, it'd be, it would be a good conversation to get the full picture of this so that we see what it looks like for, this, for the city, because you're talking about the city's interest, and you're talking about the city's interest um, of the potential of taking it back and having that as a lever and recognizing that if we take it back, there is no influence of a DDA's ability to work with an investor and offer any. Yes, there is. It's incentives. still in the district of the DDA. Even if the city re-enters the land, it still remains in the district of the downtown authority. So even if the city took the land back, mm. the DDA can still offer a TIF to a builder. They, they wouldn't be completely blocked out. It, it's just whether the city owns the lot and just determines whether we put out things for um, contractors to submit proposals, whether we would decide to sell the land. And if we decided to do proposals, the, the DDA can still be involved in that. They're not blocked out from participating. They would right. be blocked out from participating if we decided to sell the land, but then somebody's still buying it within the district too. So it, it's not a all or nothing. So, and, and I'm gonna just speak on the topic Briefly, I, I will never defer away the city's rights on a project like this because talk is cheap. If I see something come forward that is a legitimate proposal that is solid and sound, then I am absolutely 100% willing to, to entertain that and extend this um, right to reenter. But until that actually occurs, and that is a, a year from now, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna just give away the city's right. May I? Sure. So I just have one. Sub, um, substantial development is is a subjective word. Mm -hmm. We could all decide that they put all the money into it. That's subjective. I mean, that's substantial enough. So I have right. to agree. I'm. I'm not comfortable giving away this this idea right now. I mean, 
bring bring it back to me in 2023. And real quick, the other thing is is to agree to defer something is just talk. It this is a contractual obligation. So either we're going to bring the contract to council and put that in the contract, or we can say, yeah, we agree, but that means nothing. So I see Suzanne has her hand up. Only for on council member Neil's behalf. Okay, so I'm gonna let council member Ott speak and then go to council member Neil, and then we'll <clears throat> try to close this topic. Yep. So, I mean, I'm not an expert in this, uh, but, uh, but to me, it, it makes sense that we would move forward and we would have the same right as any other person that has bought land around that zone that's in the DDA district. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't see any reason to defer at this point. Well, hang on one second, Rusty's next and then yep. we'll go to council member Connors. Rusty? You're on mute, Rusty. He's I see him talking. <laughs> this is a point of information and why, why this agenda item was placed here. I've asked that you start reviewing the documents. In fact, everybody that has cited the current Second Amendment document is incorrect in what they're stating. I've pulled it up. It has never said that is substantial or anything. It states that the, the development, uh, the DDA achieves completion of construction, not significant, not part, it, it is complete by December 31st, 2023, which is a physical impossibility. That is why I have asked the council members to pull these documents and start re, uh, reviewing them so they understand what the final signed version says, because there are other draft documents that have language that's been alluded to, but the signed approved document the completion has to be done by December 31st, which is an impossibility. I think we need to just keep this on the back burner, bring us up to speed knowledge wise and see what happens with the DDA. It's premature to do anything other than just read the documents. So I just wanna make a point here. So I thought Rusty, I thought I heard, or sorry, Councilmember Neal, I thought I heard you say that um, in this item 10E, uh, that you are not asking to defer now uh, the transfer. You just wanted us to read the three documents. So I'm not sure why we're even discussing this then at this point. We should just move on because we've already, yeah, it, if, 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 if since this was Council Member Neal and Council Member Zulaga, Council Member, Council Member Zulawaga, are you in the same boat as Rusty now or do you still feel like this has to be deferred? I think we, uh, well, firstly, what Rusty says is is accurate. It, it is worthwhile council understanding the documents. I'm suggesting, and the reason we're bringing it to council is because according even to the letter which we got from Mark Crozier, um, the, uh, don't die on me, computer. I mean, my question was, Rusty so, said let me he answer the rest of the question. I'm, let, I'm trying to answer the, your question. I think we do need to consider deferring it based on, and not yet, not today, but Rusty's quite correct. Uh, we brought it to council to make council aware of it because it is a timely decision that is will be required here in the next uh, 30 days. From what we have from the investors, they're looking to make to 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 submit a proposal, a contract with the DDA in July, which is the first Tuesday in July. So, and for when that occurs, I mean, you answered my question. Thank you. Did I? Okay, good. I would just one point, Taylor, I'd like to make is that the email I got is that they're bringing an offer to purchase the property in July. And, and as a point of information, because I have received information as the liaison, there the second group will be presenting a cash offer. So if they present a cash offer and the total concept is approved uh, by the DDA board, then it becomes a moot point on, it, on deferring the, the, the date. It, right. it is irrelevant. So However, if the, the Mike Williams project goes forward, we need to be prepared to act quickly because it will be time sensitive as they're spending money. Okay, so the question is, is this item withdrawn to vote on or are you still expecting a vote? 
it is a withdrawn item to vote on. It is purely ed informational at this time. I would agree. That's with not that. what I understood from it's Council right. Member Zulaga. So, do you agree with him, Council Member Zulaga? Until you have the opportunity to research the documents that Rusty's talking about, it's inappropriate to vote, make a vote on it. So we've moved it forward. I think we've sufficiently discussed it okay. and we can bring it back uh, once we've had the opportunity to review the documents. I'll, I'll just make the comment. I'll read the view the documents when it comes time to consider in 2023. Well, I think that you're going to jeopardize. My suggestion would be, and I don't know, I don't know what the DDA is going to say. We just as we have oversight, what's happening with the DDA? Should these contracts go through, or should this contract go through? Then it would be necessary to make a, a decision on that council to make a decision on that before December 31st of 2023. So we'll we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Very good. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So no vote will be taken on this item. Correct. Correct. Okay. okay. So we're going to go ahead and move on. We are at item 11. Unless there was anyone that wanted to speak. I, <laughs> I, I, I did about four times. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So on to item 11, which is reports and for mayor reports, I just have um, some events. And I'm going to list off. So we have the farmer's market, which starts tomorrow in Memorial Park from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. Then on June 4th, we have the citywide garage sale. It'll be at Woodland Park High School, and that's from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. And we also have on June 4th the, the um, Teller County Sheriff's Open House, and that's from 10 to 2. Then June 8th, we have the Enterprise Zone Training through the Chamber of Commerce. And if you're a business owner, it will be an interesting training for you. And that will be at the Ute Pass Chamber, uh, sorry, the Ute Pass Cultural Center, right? Okay, and uh, that'll be at 5.30 to 7.15 p.m. <clears throat> and then June 8th, there's also the Community Engagement Forum with the Woodland Park Police. And that's at the Woodland Park Police Department from 6 to 7.30 p.m. And that's all I have for this evening. Council over case. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just have a request. Um, I believe that it is the uh, position of the mayor to run our meetings and to direct the audience and such with regards to the meetings. And I would ask that the council honor that and allow the mayor to run the meeting and the conduct of the meeting. Thank you, Mayor. Although sometimes I do need a little help. <laughs> especially with public comment, but <laughs> Council Member Connors. Uh, just one thing, Mayor, we had a, a very good turnout for uh, the Memorial Day veterans uh, at the cemetery. So that was a good turnout. I nice. appreciate the council members in the city that attended. Council Member Nakai. So I have one, um, Main Street. We, uh, we've talked, I've talked to Gail and Lori and um, since we didn't get to discuss it, too much in detail at the retreat, we uh, thought it might be a good idea to have a workshop between Council, Main Street, and get Dola involved so that we can all understand what the purpose of Main Street is and how we can best deal with it for the vision going forward. Okay, very good. So we can work on that with Michael and, and Gail. And I've actually already been in touch with Gail Langley from Perfect. Dola, who um, has expressed her it's a little dated now, but um, email a little while ago expressed her availability to come meet with the council, perhaps at a work session before a council meeting um, on the dates in J July and August. So we can we can see uh, if that works. I was thinking maybe one of the dates in July. Sounds good. And that's all I have. Council Member Ott. I don't have anything at this time, Mayor, but my first uh, committee meeting will be here this week. So very good. All right. All right. Council Member Zulawaka. I have nothing to report. The meeting that was held this evening didn't have a quorum. So All right. pick it up again. <laughs> City attorney. The, uh, I have at the funeral. The, oh, oh, I forgot. I forgot. Rusty. Rusty. Sorry. That's okay. Council member Neal. It's simple. I, I do not have any, uh, any meetings to report on. Oh. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> so, so at the funeral, the uh, widow asked the deceased best friend, would you like to say a word? And the best friend says, well, of course I'd be happy to, and stands up and he goes, 
plethora <laughs> and sits down and the widow turns to the best friend and says, thank you, that really means a lot. <laughs> it does mean a lot. Bad, bad I joke. Thought, I thought you were just gonna say word. word, word. Oh, that <laughs> Michael? I like it because it takes me off the hook. <laughs> um, we, we talked about a lot of numbers tonight, and I know it's hard for a lot of people. Did you know that five-fourths of people are bad at math? <laughs> With that, we, we actually do have one more thing, and it does involve numbers. Um, Aaron um, can go as quickly or as slowly as you like. Um, he has some uh, year-end numbers for 2021. Um, he will try and be brief, although he's going the wrong direction. He's already going in the wrong direction. Or the right direction, depending on how you look at it. Did it for the Okay. <laughs> Rob's getting it set up. We'll be ready momentarily here. All right. Tonight I have for you the 2021 year end report review of where we ended up last year. Uh, these numbers are unaudited, but we don't expect them to change too much. Um, these first two slides that I have are just a recap of where we had budgeted for 21 originally. So I'm going to skip through these unless you have any questions on the percentages, but nothing's changed since the last time you guys have seen these. I'm going to jump right into slide three, or slide four, actually, I'm sorry, uh, which is the general fund summary. Um, so in the budget for 2021, we started off the year with a fund balance of $3,731,370. Um, and when we got the audited numbers back, it was actually 3,889,717, which are the numbers we use for the 21, the 22 budget preparation, sorry. Uh, revenues, um, as we saw at the end of last year when we presented this, um, we knew that revenues were gonna be way up. Um, so we had 13,108,538, which was a 12% increase over the previous year. And when we did the 2022 budget, we had looked at it and thought it was going to be 13,083. So we were with, within about 20,000 of our revenue projection, which is pretty, pretty good, I think, uh, when we talk about how difficult it is to project. So um, we were 20,000 over what we projected in the 2022 budget. Expenditures, um, we were, yeah, that's in the right direction, exactly. <laughs> uh, expenditures, the original budget was uh, about 11,700,000 and we actually ended up at 11,139,000. Um, in the budget, we had actually projected 11,705,000 because we had done the supplemental for COLA. Uh, so we actually had a huge savings there of almost $600,000. And it was essentially all salary savings. Um, as we talked about tonight with the compensation study, there was a reason that we, we went so aggressively and it's because we had tremendous staff shortages. Um, so our, our ending fund balance was 5,858,000 as opposed to the 3.7 million that was originally projected. And when we did the year end numbers uh, for the 22 budget, we had 5.2 million. So it was the 600,000 savings. Um, I do want to remind council, um, we did already allocate a million dollars of this towards the debt when we did a uh, supplemental last year. I don't know if anyone's listening. Yeah, I don't know. Do you guys I'm, have any questions? I'm sorry, or? I said, I turned to Kelly and I said, it looks like maybe you and Frank could finally order new chairs. <laughs> so, and then it caused a ruckus. I appreciate that. <laughs> 
test. Oh, it's coming Wednesday. There you go. So I'm sorry, Aaron. Oh, okay. We'll goodness. go back on track so we can get out so, of here. Yeah. So pick up where you left off with that 1 million we allocated. Go ahead. So we, we already had allocated a million dollars towards the debt service in 22. Um, and most of this money has already been programmed into the 2022 budget. If you're wondering what we did with all that excess. Any questions on this one? Okay. Um, do you guys want me to go into detail on the expenditures and revenues? No, okay. Is, is there any specific questions you have that you've reviewed already? No, everything looks great? All right, I, lo I love to hear that. <laughs> well, thank Every, you very much. Everything's in the right direction. So next thank you. At so, 10 o'clock, you can do 2020, <laughs> So Aaron, I'll ask you some questions offline. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you all. That's all I got. All right. Then meetings adjourned. Thank you very much.